we're at the fifth hole, par three. Kind of little, tiny little drop hole, you know what I mean? Probably like a pitching wedge on nine iron into this green. But the green is so fast, it's amazing. It runs from left to right. But look how quick these greens can be. I mean, I set that ball rolling only just, and it looks like it's gonna go halfway, but it'll run and run, you know, and it's already past the hole. Unbelievable, so, so fast. But as you come over here, final day, you can see where this pin position is going to be. Just further on the right-hand side here. Now you've got this bunker lurking just down here, bunker just behind it. I mean, the fringes are quite hard. As soon as you throw it, it's bang, and then it rolls. And if it doesn't go, doesn't stop too quick, over it goes straight into the bunker. Now if I quickly pick this ball up, I'm going to show you, demonstrate to you, what happens if you miss this green to the right. Now you come down here and you've just blocked it that little bit and boing, off you go. And look at that thick claggy stuff over there. Definitely don't want to be in there. This hole is a little diamond. This could be a serious card wrecker. If you get carried away, you know, you could come off with a four or five very, very easy. This hole is amazing. Well, we're at the ninth hole. Par four, you can see the tee box way in the distance up there, really elevated tee. Come down here, this is about 260 to reach this point, but it's only like a five iron. You know, they're pitching at about 220 there and running about 40. I mean, it's so hard and dry and it's running so fast. I mean, this rough, as you can see, is so thick. If you go in it, there's no way you're able to get to the green in two. And the green is only just down there as well. I mean, there is just, you know, you've got about 120 yards left, but a massive ditch, thick rough down there as well. I mean, great green. I mean, if that pin was tucked on the left-hand side on final day with that bunker and the ravine right there, unbelievable. This hole is fantastic, but I can't resist having a go because this is like the kind of shot you feel like you could hold. You know, green below you, just perfect club in your hand for spin. So inviting. I've got to give it a go. Now, just a nice easy one, John. Now he's put him up in the air. He's trying to draw back. Has he got the right club? He's not bad, but as you can see, when the green's below you, you're liable to spin it. This hole is fantastic, actually. Just don't get carried away. Play it sensibly. We're at the 10th hole, par three. Absolutely beautiful. You can see for yourselves how lovely this is. All the trees wrapped around this green. It's a tiny little narrow green to come into as well. Massive bunker, huge lip at the front of the green, massive kickoff on the right hand side, trees on the left, but it can feed down for you if you're lucky. But this hole is an absolute beauty. This could be a serious car wrecker when it comes to your round of golf. Now, I can't resist but hit one. If you don't if you don't hit the dance floor on this one, you could be looking for your ball elsewhere. Now, this is what is required. Aiming at the left edge of that nice little juicy buggy up there. Come on. He's straight at the hole. It's come up a little short, but I take it. I'd be very, very happy with that. We're here at the 17th, Dale Hill's signature hole. It is an absolute beauty, it really is. There's your tee box right there, avenue of trees from start to finish, absolutely beautiful. Works all its way up to the green with this lovely, lovely stream working right in front of it as well. I mean, this hole is a no-brainer really, no driver required. Five iron, you know, it's gonna be pitching around 200 and rolling out in the region, only leaving me probably 100 yards in. Now, this green is very short, well, very small and fiddly, so I need to go in there with a lot of spin. So I've chosen to lay back a lot more, got my 56 out so I can uh, give it a rip and generate that spin, like I said. Well, I'm gonna give it a go because this hole is an absolute cracker and I can't, Resist. Straight at it. Short club in your hand. You can be aggressive. Now, he's at it. He's at it. He's come up a bit short, but like I said, I was able to get the spin. But, off the tee, if you honestly hit too much club, you're going to come in and all of a sudden, you're way too close to this green. Now, if you come with me, come on, Mr. Cameraman. Come with me. I've got a lob wedge in my hand, but I'm too close. I can't generate enough spin. I've got about 70 yards to go, and I'm trying to hit a soft one. 
It's not going to happen. So I've got to come in high and try and land it soft because the spin is not going to be there. Now I've actually played an absolute cracker, but nine times out of ten, that's not the play. Leave yourself well back, full yardage in, create enough spin to control the golf shot. Well, we're at the final hole. A really, really strong par four. I mean, actually was a par five, but for this tournament, changed it to a par four. Now, 463 yards it is. Now, all the way uphill, probably playing in the region of 500 yards. I mean, I've hit my drive, as you can see, straight down the middle, I've hit it 275, it says on the car, but with the elevation, about 290. Now, I've left myself, for oh, about 180 in, 190, and I've got a six iron, still uphill, long way to go, but this hole demands great shots, it really does. You've got all this trouble down the left-hand side, which guards the beautiful old golf course it has, and this green that you come to is all topsy-turvy, quite a big surface, though, but I'm going to try and take one on now at the middle of the clubhouse and just put it in the middle of the green. No frills, no spills. Here we go. Now it's straight at it, but is it the club? I think it is, you know. Happy days.